All right, so this is my Mila C3 video. Uh, so this was gonna be about basically how to maintain the Mila C3 vacuum and some tips about using it and uh, basically just how to get the most out of using it. So this is for Mila C3 users and owners, uh, whether you are a maid or wife, daughter, kid, spouse, whoever uses it, that's uh, who this video is for. There's some things about this vacuum that are not covered in the owner's manual, um, at least not explicitly, and Mila does not mention them, and uh, it, they're not easy to, they're not tips that are easy to find and just run across them. So I'm gonna go over those, as well as the maintenance, and I'm gonna throw these tips in, kind of sprinkle them in throughout the video as I show you how to maintain it. So the first thing you wanna do is take it apart. Um, so to take the hose off, there are these two clips on both sides of it. You just squeeze them and then pull out. And then you can set the power nozzle and hose assembly this side. This is where most of the action happens in the main motor unit. So this is basically going to cover how to change the filters and how to change the bag. Um, I did want to show you, these are my tools that I'm going to use and products I like to use with this machine. But I was going to show you the bolt pack. I don't think that you can get these at most uh, or all of the Mila dealers, but it is a it is their bulk pack of bags for the C3. You can get a bulk pack for most of their bag vacuums. I think all of them. Um, this one comes with 16 of the AirClean HEPA bags, uh, four pre-motor filters, and one HEPA uh, True HEPA 13 filter. Um, it's a hundred bucks, about a hundred bucks, give or take. Sometimes they have a sale on these. I like to buy these on Black Friday. I've had this vacuum for almost two years or over two years and this is the first box I bought with it when I first bought it and I still have yet to go through all of the bags. <clears throat> so you might have to change the bags um, but if you buy the bolt pack you won't have to worry about buying them for a very long time and it comes with everything else you need to maintain this machine. Um, so I'm going to set these aside. And then this knife. So what, what I'm going to do is pull out. Uh, I'm going to pretend like I'm changing the bag on this. So I'm going to pull out my spare uh, HEPA filter, a bag, and a pre-motor filter. I'm also going to go over a cheaper type of filter that Mila sells called the AirClean filter. There's something you need to know about this, but I'll get into that later. Um, and then I need a, yes, one of these. Okay. All right. So now that I've got that out of the way, and I like how it comes in a nice little box that you can just kind of store in the closet somewhere um, to make a mess out of it. All right. So we've got uh, the, the exhaust filters and the bag and the pre-motor filter. So this is the order that the airflow is going to travel through. It's going to go through the bag. Um, which has a seal around the intake. This is what this rubber thing is for. Um, so once the dirt gets in this bag, it's not gonna leak out of anywhere else. So whatever does make it through the bag is then gonna go through the pre-motor filter. And this is just to kind of protect the motor long-term. It protects any dirt, dust, or debris, or particles from getting into the motor. That's one of the reasons why their motors last so long. And in the final stage, whatever passes this, uh, the pre-motor filter, or perhaps it's the carbon dust being produced by the motor itself, the uh, exhaust filters will catch. Um, so this is the cheapest uh, exhaust filter option. It is the air clean filter. This does not filter nearly as well as a HEPA filter, but they're a lot cheaper than the HEPA filter. The, the main HEPA uh, filters that for these C3s is like 50 or 60 bucks by itself. Uh, Mila says it's good for 50 hours of use. I tend to replace them when they're about that 70% uh, lifespan or before if I start noticing an odor. Um, but they are they do work very, very well. All these filters come with a, a rubber seal around them so that whenever they're placed and seated in the machine, no dust will leak from out from around it. All right, so the first thing you should do is after you get those items together, obviously open up the unit. And then you want to remove 
um, uh, the premotor filter bag and HEPA filter. So one thing about opening this bag compartment, if you are opening it to check it for any reason, or you know someone that is opening this uh, to check it out, this machine is designed to pull the bag out for you so you don't have to put much effort into pulling it out. So it pulls the bag out for you halfway. It doesn't do this every time, but most of the time it does it. It's supposed to do it every time. But that means that if, uh, if it isn't full and you decide to leave the bag in there and you close it, um, it can close without the bag fully seated in and inserted. And so when you do that and then you vacuum with it, uh, the intake is not fully closed around the intake of the bag and it will leak, leak dust through your bag compartment. And if you vacuum too long with this like this, it can cause catastrophic damage to the motor. It'll clog up the premotor filter and basically suffocate the motor. It, it can even break through the premotor filter, whatever. It depends on what kind of particles are in there. And then everything gets in your motor and it can destroy your motor. So make sure that if you open this up and you don't take the bag out, or even when you put a bag in, that you make sure that you push this back in like that. Make sure it's down as far as it will go. Some people I've heard will even remove this uh, they'll even remove this component. And you don't wanna do that. Um, if you try to put a bag in there without this in, just gonna push it up onto the intake, uh, the, the air pressure will blow it off. And the same thing will happen. The dirt will get into the motor, uh, potentially bypass the pre-motor filter. <clears throat> that pre-motor filter is a good thing to have, but it's not a perfect fail-safe, uh, foolproof thing. Um, it'll protect the machine as best as it can, but there are situations where it's not going to work. Um, so you hit remove the bag, you know, uh, set it aside. It does have a self-sealing uh, cap inside of it that will seal the, the bag once uh, you pull it out. So we're gonna set that aside. And then you can pull out the pre-motor filter. Now, you only have to replace this filter after every four full bags. Um, if you're like me and you replace your bags when they're at like half capacity or 60% capacity, then you would want to replace these after every eight bags. I like to write on my bag which bag I'm on. Like, so if I'm filling them at half capacity, I'm going to write uh, one out of eight or four out of eight or whatever bag I'm on and then date it. I'm going to go ahead and replace this bag just because it's fairly heavy and it feels pretty full. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and replace the pre-motor filter um, because it looks really, really, it's just discolored. It does have some fur on it, um, or a, whatever that is, like a piece of hair. So I am gonna replace that, but I am going to leave the HEPA filter in here. Actually, I might even replace that. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the HEPA filter because I have a new one. So I'm going to take this out. Um, this HEPA filter is only at, it's at about 50% of the uh, uh, lifespan. Um, and how can I tell that? So I do date, I'll date the, uh, I'll write the date on the filter, the date that I put it in. But you can also just press this green tab, you pull this up and you press this tab, squeeze it really hard. And this red line will travel from the left to the right and once that's filled up, that is like, that's when you need to replace it for sure. You can replace it beforehand if you notice like major discoloration, um, if you notice a really bad odor coming from it, even though you've replaced the bag or the pre-motor filter, um, or if you feel like you have a loss of suction after you've replaced the bag and the pre-motor filter. I personally can tell when I have new filters and a new bag in my machine, although it still cleans very, very well um, when it has a full bag. I just like things to work top-notch, 100% performance. So I'm gonna set those aside. Um, so that's a full bag. I wanna show you that, I'm gonna pull this up to the camera. I forget the flashlight, give me one second. So I'm gonna show you that that is a full bag. and there is very little to no dust inside this bag compartment. And this is a two-year-old machine. I've never blown this out. I had a Kimball Progressive that 
after one or two bags, the bag compartment was super, super dusty. So this is the first, you know, super premium vacuum I've owned. And when I saw that, after I changed the bag for the first time, I was really impressed with that. So I need to get a marker, but I'll just figure that for now. I'll write it on it later. So you want to write the dates. Um, on your pre-motor filter, just tally marks like one out of four. So in this bulk pack of bags, probably all of the bags, it'll come with this thing, uh, the pre-motor filter sheet, and you pick your model out. So I have a C3, which is the same as an S8. The S8 was the sort of the first generation of the C3 vacuum, but now it's the C3. But uh, so you pick out which model you have. Now let's say I have the S8 and I will cut around the edges and this will basically be the S8 C3 filter. Um, but you technically can get a second one out of this because you can fold it back over and do the other side as well. A lot of people don't catch that. So if you want to replace this more frequently or it gets dirtier faster than anticipated, keep that in mind that you can do that so you have a spare for each sheet you get. Um, this one's clean, ready to go, so I'm just going to use this one. Um, I'll set that back on the bag box. Now this filter will come with every box of bags you buy if you don't get the HEPA filter with the box. And so Mila gives you your pre-motor filter and your HEPA exhaust filter for every four bags you get. But this is, I'm talking about uh, the bags, uh, the boxes that don't come with the HEPA filter. Because um, obviously if they come with the HEPA filter, they're not going to give you the cheaper version. So if you buy a box of bags that don't come with the filter kit included, or the, the HEPA filter, it's going to come with the bags and the pre-motor filter and, and this. So they give you everything you need. But what they don't give you is this filter cage. Um, this is a lot smaller than uh, the HEPA filter. You can see that. So to take up the space in the machine that the, this filter takes up, you have to buy this, I think they call it a filter cage separately. This is after, I don't know, probably a few months of using this air clean filter. I wanted to test it out, um, probably after four bags. But you have to buy this separately from Mila or from your local authorized Mila dealer. Um, it's about $5, it's really cheap. Um, but the, the point of putting this inside of this is because this has seals around it. And if you want the Mila filtration, the, the, all of your um, filters need to have the seal around it. So you buy this separately and Mila doesn't even tell you to do that. That's one of the reasons why it's important to buy from a local authorized Mila dealer because they will fill you in on all these things that are not covered in the manual. Um, for instance, if you bought it off Amazon and you didn't know that you were supposed to push the bag back down inside of this and then you used it, uh, it might void your warranty because dirt came through the machine. So. Um, you just open this up and you put a new one in there. It kind of has these guiders where uh, it'll show you where to place this. All right. So you can place it square in the middle of it. And then you just shut it. Like that. So if you're going to use this one, um, you just, there are these teeth in the back of of each filter, just like on the back of this one, they're right here, and you plug them into these notches within the machine. They're in the back right here. So you just plug them in there, and once those are in place, you just lower it down, and you press it on the corners. And rub your thumbs along the edges to make sure it's sealed. So that's what you're, uh, that's how you install this one. but um, I upgraded, or I prefer to use the, the HEPA filters themselves, so. Come on now. I'm gonna change this back out. This back down there. All right, so now we have our new HEPA filter, new pre-motor filter, and new bag. I'm going to put this used, uh, half-use HEPA filter back in the box of the, the new HEPA filter just in case I were to forget to change the new filter um, 
and I needed to use it uh, at that moment, I would have a spare on hand. You can obviously order spares by themselves from Mila. You can order these by themselves from Mila, but if you buy the, the bags, uh, the box kits, you're going to get everything you need. Mila sells different types of box kits, so make sure that when you read the description, you're getting the right bag or the right filter set for your model. Um, with the C3 and S8, it is, it is the GN and the uh, is this the wrong one? Oh, that is the wrong filter. My man, that is for my Mila Upright. No wonder why I don't have a replacement for it. I thought I got lucky when I went to grab all this stuff. So basically, I'm going to have to keep the old one. That's fine. Um, that's hilarious. <laughs> all right, so when you put the uh, a new HEPA filter in, obviously you want to pinch the the green tab and all the, the red line over time will cross over all the way to the right. Um, or, and you can write the date on it like I did. This is supposed to be replaced once a year or e after every 50 hours or when this line uh, finishes filling up or whichever one comes first. Um, like I said, if it starts to smell or you notice a major drop in section after you have change the bag and pre-motor filter, um, by all means, it's probably, you should probably replace it. Everyone's needs are different. So this goes in exactly the same way as the filter cage for the air clean filter. You follow the notches in the back and it'll line it up and then you just press down on the edges like that and you'll fill it click into place. Um, I cleaned the surface off before this video, it's okay. Uh, and then the air clean filter, there is this spot for it in the back of the back compartment, right here. It's behind this blue door, so you'll just pull this door down, pull out the old one, and put in the new one. And make sure that uh, it fills up the space that it's not crumpled or anything. In other words, make sure it isn't exactly as it's intended to. And then as far as the bag goes, um, I'm gonna show you a cool trick with the bags. Um, obviously make sure that this piece is here. <clears throat> Mila uh, has started color coding. I don't know if they've done this for a while, but they color code which bag is with which model. So the color of the collar should match the color of the, the bracket that holds it and the color of the pre-motor filter door. Um, I highly recommend and advise to not use generic bags. Do not buy them off Amazon. I've had generic uh, parts off Amazon that were advertised as Mila and they came in the mail and they had Mila labeling on them, but the quality was just horrible. But then I would order the same part from the Mila website directly or from my local dealer and the quality would be much, much, much better. So some of that stuff can be counterfeit, even though it says it's not, or it looks like it's not. So you just kind of want to keep the bag folded like that, and it will slide, obviously, into its bracket. You're going to feel a little bit of resistance. That's, that's when you need to push it in. It'll clip. And this back part, you don't need to open it up for it. You just kind of let it hang there like that. There are guiders up in the machine along here that will kind of fold the bag in as you shut it so it doesn't get caught um, in the door. So I'm just going to shut it like this, and uh, then I like to take tied laundry beads, um, and I pour them into the intake. So what this does is it, it, it scents the exhaust air, so the house will smell like this or whatever scent you choose when you're vacuuming, and it just kind of makes it even more enjoyable to vacuum, or a little bit more enjoyable. And you want to be kind of careful of how much you use. I put two capfuls of this one one time and it was like I was like drowning in Tide. I just think one good one like this is a good amount. Um, you can obviously suck these up inside the hose or the power nozzle, but I just like to pour them like this. 
This is also a good idea if you have pets or your vacuum just has an odor um, and you can't get it, you know, you're just tired of it smelling bad. But if it's smelling bad, it probably means it should be serviced. Um, but if you don't have the money to do that or just don't want to do it, it's not convenient, and this is more convenient for now, then that's a good, really good little tip, life hack. So this component is done. Another thing I like to do when well, changing the bags and filters is just to give it a good wipe down. I like to use automotive cleaning products just because they're all purpose cleaners that kind of puts a good gloss on it. You can also use Pledge, um, but Pledge is kind of oily and I don't like the oily ones. I like low residue all purpose cleaners that have a little bit of gloss in them just because the oily ones will, the super oily ones will let dirt get a uh, cling to this. I mean the static will draw it to it, but the dirt will make the oil in the pledge makes it a lot worse. Okay, so that part's done. Alright, so we're gonna move this guy out of the way. See how nice and glossy that looks? This is a two-year-old machine, but it makes it look like it's brand new. All right, so the next thing you want to do um, is work on the power nozzle. Um, the only thing you need to really do with the hose uh, is just to kind of take the hose off of the extension wand. Um, look through the wand, extend it out all the way when you do this, and then compress it all the way. If you see a pigtail come out, because there's an internal wire to this, um, it's you need to get that replaced. It'll cause a clog if you let it sit there. That happened to me. It was fixed under warranty. I got a new wand directly from Mila, no questions asked. Um, if, there, if, there's a, if there is a blockage in there, be very careful with how you get it out, because if you put anything up inside of it, you can make the pigtail come out even worse if the pigtail's out. Um, I like to take my air compressor and try to blow, uh, blow it out first, but so just check for clogs, remove those, um, and if you want to check for clogs in the hose, you can run a marble or a penny or something through the hose, and if it comes out the other end, then the chances are there's no clog. Let me set that aside. Now with the power nozzle, I do the same thing, I just kind of spray it down. wipe that down. These things get really nasty guys. Really, really gross. Um, so after that, uh, wipe that down. You want to turn it over and take a knife or some scissors. Um, now, the way that Mila designs their power nozzles, most of them, you cannot remove the brush roll. So if there's a lot of hair wrapped around it, you kind of have to, you have to cut out the hair with the brush roll and the power nozzle. But Mila does give you these uh, indentations where you're supposed to run a knife or scissors along. Um, and they do, they have these lines on both sides. So you do that on both sides. And these lines just kind of make it easier to cut through these hairs and materials. Um, and then after you do that, I prefer to pick the hairs out myself, get it really, really clean, or you can turn the vacuum on and see if it'll suck the hair through since it's no longer caught by the brush roll. Every time I've tried that though, it tends to get caught back into the brush roll and wound up again. Um, so this is stuff that you're supposed to do by yourself at home. I really recommend taking your Mila into an authorized Mila uh, service center to get it uh, tuned up. There are things, components inside the power nozzle that Greasing them just kind of helps the power nozzle last a little bit longer and work a lot smoother. They can break, get into break down the motor unit and kind of clean out the motor if there's any dust in there. They just kind of keep it in perfect condition. It's just a good idea to do that every year, um, at least every three to five years. If you maintain it like I maintain my machines, you could probably get by with going out uh, with going a little longer in, uh, in between those uh, services, but. Um, that's about it. Uh, so one more tip. 
when I first got this machine, don't get me wrong, I love this power nozzle. This is the SCB-236. Um, Mila sells another power nozzle called the SCB-228, and there's a one that's even cheaper and smaller than that one, but the 228 and 236 are about the same size. They're full size, full power power heads that are designed for the most powerful canisters. So the differences between them is the 236 has a headlight, the 236 has a rubber bumper around it to, pr to protect furniture, uh, the 236 has a lower profile so it can get under furniture that's lower than the 228 can, and it is a little bit quieter. Um, the, the Mila distributor told me that they have the same brush roll, and this is a chevron design, which is designed to maximize dirt pickup and designed to green your carpet really, really well to leave those nice carpet lines. Um, I see some hair caught in there. But when I first got this machine, you know, I spent a lot of money on it, and uh, it just had this obnoxious, squeaking, rubbing noise every time I would pull it backwards. And this is a, you know, a premium product. Um, it's supposed, M Mila's kind of culture is a luxurious experience with their products. That's just kind of the impression I get from them. But uh, having that obnoxious, rattling, squealing, rubbing noise was like not at all. That was the only thing blocking me from it. Um, so they sent me another power nozzle. No questions I asked, Mila has excellent customer service. And uh, they were very, very, very nice about it. And they didn't ask me for pictures, they didn't ask me for a video, they didn't ask me for any proof, they just said, what's your address? And I said, all right, we're gonna send you a brand new one. And I got it, and this is it. Um, it did the same thing. So I did not call him back. I thought, okay, it's obviously got it have it has to do with the wheels because it would only do it on the backward pull um, and only if this power nozzle would lift up slightly on the backward pull um, but then I would have to extend the wand all the way to get it to not to do that and that was just a little bit too long for my comfort so I got some WD-40 and I sprayed it into the bearings of each wheel four times and then I turned it over and did it again on each wheel on the other sides and I just rolled them like that on each side that I had turned it um, for quite a long time probably 10 minutes total for all four wheels and uh, it quit doing it and has not done it since so if that bothers you on your C3 or your power, uh, two, 236 power nozzle that is a tip um, that you should uh, probably keep in mind. I initially tried to do that with the WD silicone spray. Um, that did not fix it at all. So then I tried the regular WD-40 several months later after I got annoyed with that noise again and it worked immediately. So the regular WD-40 is the way to go with that. Um, but be careful though, it will leak a little bit when you first do it. So just kind of keep it over a towel or a paper towel until it's like, done dripping or whatever. I use a lot. Um, but it, it did work. So that's all there is to maintaining this machine. So you change your HEPA exhaust filter once a month or every 50 hours or uh, sooner, however often you feel like, if it's before that. Um, if it's dirty, discolored, you notice a drop in section, it smells bad, uh, replace the exhaust filter. Um, change the bag at half capacity uh, or between half capacity and 70 75 percent capacity is best where you don't so you don't lose like so much suction that it starts to become inefficient and uh, change the pre-motor filter after every four full bags or after every eight half full bags and write your dates on the filters if uh, I find that to be very very helpful so I write the date on my exhaust filter pre-motor filter um, I'll tally the pre-motor filter like one out of four and then I will uh, write the uh, number of the bag that I'm using on the bag. Uh, so if you want to wait for your bag to be at full capacity, let me show you how to do this because Mila's method of doing this is really weird. This vacuum does come with a bag check indicator and 
it is right here. So when the bag is full, this will be orange. There's like this orange thing that'll come all the way over the, the more full it gets and then when it's full, full, it'll be totally covered up. I like to replace the bag when it's, there's about a half or a quarter of an inch of space left of it not being orange. Um, but to check that, um, so you're supposed to obviously uh, put the hose on, put the wand on, fully extend the wand, and then Mila says to put on one of the hard floor tools, um, and then turn the vacuum on its uh, highest suction setting. And whatever reading it gives you at that time, that is the accurate reading. So if it's full when you do that, um, then the machine, th then the bag is full. You should replace it if you want to wait till it's full, according to Mila. Um, so again, you just extend the hose, the wand all the way out, put a hard floor tool on, on the machine, stick it up in the air, and then turn the section onto its highest setting. And if the bag check indicator is full, when you do that, um, then it's time to replace the bag. But that's the reading you should go off of when you have it set up like that. That is how Mila told me to change the bag, and that is how the manual tells you to check the bag indicator for an accurate reading. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope you guys found that valuable. Um, again, if you want to save a little bit of money, it's best to buy these bags in bulk. <clears throat> And you need to make sure that you get the correct uh, filter set. So I have the GN. The GN is for, it'll tell you what models they're for. I have the complete C3 series. Um, it's also good for the S8 series, which is the C3 series. It's an older generation of the C3, but it says C3 on here. It is the GN bags, um, and it comes with the HEPA filter four pre-motor filters, or you can cut them into two so you'll have eight pre-motor filters, and one exhaust filter, a HEPA filter. Um, there is a third type of filter you can buy for this, and it is the activated charcoal filter. That filter comes standard on the cat and dog model, which is the white C3. In, the, in America, it's, it's the white C3. Um, my Mila dealer told me that those are actually uh, not very effective at containing odors from pets and they don't filter very well either. So if you have that filter set up, I recommend just going ahead and upgrading to um, the HEPA filter. And why is that? Well, you're going to get the most out of this machine if you use the HEPA filter. Um, it's one of the reasons why most people buy it. And he even, he told me that the HEPA filter filters so well that it actually will filter out the bacteria and odors that are causing that wet dog smell. So people, he said people, from feedback he got from people that they had better luck with the, that pet odor containment from the HEPA filter than they did the actual pet filter, which is the charcoal filter. So make sure when you're buying these bulk packs, that you're getting the actual HEPA filter. It'll say like <sighs> AirClean 3D True HEPA filter or something along those lines. Um, and that's trash. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Um, if you wanna buy some of these Tide laundry beads, um, they're awesome. Make sure you do not use the powders, like carpet powder, arm and hammer. That stuff is horrible for vacuums. It clogs the bags up, clogs the filters up. From the moment you use it and it is a nightmare to clean out especially on bagless vacuums if you do that on a bag vacuum <clears throat> it'll clog your bag up and take away your suction in like i don't know two minutes if that um, but all you have to really do if it's a sealed system is replace the bag if it's a bagless vacuum you have to take it in and have it serviced and have it really cleaned out um, <clears throat> So that's why I like these beads because they're not small enough to clog the pores. They're literally just like little beads. Um, and they, uh, the scent that they leave like will last a long time, like a month. Um, so that's why I like to use those. <clears throat> All right.
And as far as the cleaning product to wipe this machine down with, um, they don't make this anymore, but this is called Vac Polish from Stain X. It does leave kind of a greasy film, but it's not quite as bad as Pledge. I prefer to use the, uh, it's an automotive cleaning product from Meguiar's. I bought it at O'Reilly Auto Parts. You can also buy it at Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, um, those kinds of places, but uh, it's by Meguiar's. It's an all-purpose cleaner. It's like a detailer uh, spray, a finishing touch detailer spray, and it says it like renews uh, smudges, uh, residue, fingerprints, um, and it puts a little bit of a gloss on it, but it doesn't leave like a residue behind that's oily and greasy and attracts dust to stick on it. So I really like that product. It also cleans glass really well and like plastics, like the inside of a dustbin. I, it's, a, it's a really good product. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you can really just kind of use any all-purpose cleaner. I just like having things that are make it kind of glossy and we'll take the smudges off and not leave a streak. So that's what I recommend with that. All right. So that's how to maintain a Mila C3. This is going to go for all C3 models um, and S8s. Uh, if you don't have a power nozzle, um, you should really, all of their power nozzles with a brush will have that line that, that you can cut the, the hair off with. And if it's just a hard floor tool, well then you can just take the vacuum and vacuum off the bristles. Um, or you can even soak the soak those floor heads in a sink with detergent and scrub them and let them dry uh, in front of a fan for 24 hours. Um, you can also soak the attachments in a disinfectant solution. Um, not the wand or the hose, because those have wires in them, but the hard floor tools and the uh, standard attachments that come with it, you can do that with. All right, um, all right, well, I think that's it. I feel like there's so much I should cover about it, but I think that really is it. Um, you know, I can't think of anything else, so have a good day and give it a lot. I'm gonna turn this video off, and I gotta edit this and get to bed. Out.